So let's say we want to find the distance traveled in this particular example. Well, the first thing we'd have to do is get the derivative, right? Because the distance traveled is going to be the integral of the magnitude of the derivative, right? It's the integral of the speed. Makes sense, right? Like distance, you know, is speed times time. Sure, got it. Okay, so um, first we need r prime. So r prime of t, take the derivative component-wise, 1, 2t, and then we have pi cosine pi t. Okay, so the magnitude of r prime, well, that's going to be, what's it going to be? square root of 1 plus 4t squared plus pi squared and then cos squared. Oops. I want to start with sine. Um, cos squared pi t. All right. Um, so that means that the the distance traveled is going to be the integral. So in this case, our interval is from minus 2 to 2 of the magnitude of r prime. So square root of 1 plus 4t squared plus pi squared cos squared pi t dt. And that, of course, is not an integral that we can evaluate using fundamental theorem of calculus. Right? We're not going to come up with an antiderivative for that, uh, this function here involving the square root. Right? So we have to use a numerical approximation. So we pull out our, our trapezoid rule, our Simpson's method, one of these numerical techniques, or, or more likely, we just take this integral and we plug it into the computer, right? Wolfram alpha, something like that. Uh, we see what it gives us, and if I'm remembering correctly, I think it comes out to be about 12.88. Okay? So that's the distance traveled. All right. Um, now, um, with that in mind, uh, let's jump straight to average speed, and then we'll come back to the displacement. Average speed should just be the, the total distance traveled divided by the duration of travel, right? Um, so the average speed should just be, all right, so say v average um, is going to be 12.88, all right, divided by, what's the length of the interval? 2 minus minus 2 over 4, right? So 3.22 is your average speed, right? Scalar quantity. Uh, displacement, recall the displacement is a, a vector quantity, right? The displacement is given by calculating r at the two endpoints and computing the difference, right? So it's going to be the vector difference is going to be 2, 4, and then, well, 0, right? Because sine of any integer multiple of pi, that's going to be 0 simplifies things for us. Uh, and then we have a uh, minus 2, 4, and 0, right? So the displacement is going to be uh, 4, 0, 0, right? Um, so the total distance traveled, 12.88, is, is significantly more than the magnitude of the displacement, which is just 4 units. Right? Um, and that makes sense, right? The, the sine function here, that's going to cause it to kind of move back and forth, right? So it's not like you're just following a straight line path. We're, we're definitely not taking the shortest distance from the beginning to the end. We're taking a much more meandering path, and that's why the distance traveled is much higher than the magnitude of the displacement.